Yes, December 13th, Sunday evening. Hamlet, Shakespeare's Hamlet, Act 1, Scene 4. Many parts in this, and we just kind of run them all together. The air bites shrewdly. It is very cold. It is a nipping and an eager air. What hour now? I think it lacks of 12. Notice struck. Indeed, I heard it not. It then draws near the season wherein the spirit held his wont to walk. A flourish of trumpets and two pieces go off within. What does this mean, my lord? The king doth wake tonight and takes his rouse, keeps wassile in the swaggering upspring reels. And as he drains his drafts of Rhenish down, the kettle drum and trumpet thus bray out the triumph of his pledge. Is it a custom? Ha <laughs> I am Arist. But to my mind, though I am native here and to the manner born, it is a custom more honored in the breach than the, the observance. This heavy-headed revel, east and west, makes us traduced and taxed of other nations. They keep us drunkards and with swinish phrase, soil our addition, and indeed it takes from our achievements though performed at height, the pith and marrow of our attribute. So, oft it chances in particular men that for some vicious mole of nature in them, as in their birth, when, wherein they are not guilty, since nature cannot choose his origin, by their overgrowth of some complexion, oft breaking down the pales and forts of reason, or by some habit that too much or leavens the form of applause of manners that these men carrying, I say, the stamp of one defect, being nature's livery or fortune star. His virtues else, be they as pure as grace, as infinite as man may undergo, shall in the general censor take corruption from that particular fault. The dram of evil doth all the noble substance often doubt to his own scandal inter ghost. Look, my lord, it comes. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Be thou a spirit of health or a goblin damned, bring with thee airs from heaven or blasts from hell, be thy intents wicked or charitable. Thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, king, father, royal dame, O oh, answer me. Let me not burst in ignorance, but tell why Thy canonized bones, hirsed in death, have burst their cerements. Why the sulpicur, wherein we saw thee quietly inured, hath oped his ponderous and marble jaws and cast thee up again? What may this mean that thou, dead corpse, again in complete steel, revisits thus the glimpses of the moon? making night hideous, and we fools of nature so horridly to shake our disposition with thoughts beyond the reaches of our souls. Say, why is this? Wherefore? What should we do? The ghost beckons Hamlet. It beckons you to go away with it, as if it's some impartment to desire to you alone. Look what courteous action it wafts you to a more removed ground but do not go with it no by no means it will not speak then I will follow it do not my lord why what should be the fear I did not set my life at a pin's fee and for my soul what could it do to that being a thing immortal as itself 
waves me forth again, I'll follow it. What if it tempt you toward the flood, my lord? Or to the dreaded summit of the cliff that beetles over his base into the sea? And there assume some other horrible form which might deprive your sovereignty of reason and draw you into madness. Think of it. The very place puts toys of desperation without more motive into every brain that looks so many fathoms to the sea and hears it roar beneath. It wafts me forth again. Go on, I'll follow thee. You shall not go, my lord. Hold off your hands. Be ruled, you shall not go. My fate cries out and makes each petty nerve in this body as hardy as the Nemean lion's nerve. Still am I called. Unhand me, gentlemen. By heaven, I'll make a ghost of him that lets me. I say, away. Go on, I'll follow thee. He waxes desperate with imagination. Let's follow. Tis not fit thus to obey. Have after. To what issue will this come? Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct it. Nay, let's follow him. Exit. Exeunt. Act 1, Scene 5. Whither wilt thou lead me? Speak, I'll go no further. Mark me. I will. My hour is almost come when I to sulfurous and tormenting flames must render up myself. Alas, poor ghost! Pity me not, but lend thy serious hearing to what I shall unfold. Speak, I am bound to hear. So shall thou to revenge when thou shalt hear. What? I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night and for the day, confined to fast and fires, until the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. But that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house, I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, make thy two eyes like stars start from their spheres. Thy knotted and combined locks to part and each particular hair to stand on in like quills upon the fretful porcupine. But this eternal blazon must not be to ears of flesh and blood. List, list, O oh list, if ever thou didst thy dear father love, O oh God, revenge is foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? <laughs> Murder, most foul, as in the best it is, but this most foul, strange and unnatural. Haste me to know it, that I, with wings as swift as meditation and the thoughts of love, may sweep to my revenge. I find thee apt, and duller shouldst thou be than the fat weed that roots itself in ease on Lethe Wharf. Wouldst thou not stir in this? Now, Hamlet, here, tis given out that, sleeping in my orchard, a serpent stung me. So the whole ear is, by a forged process of my death, rankly abused. But know thou, noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul! <laughs> my, my uncle! I, <laughs> that incestuous that adulterate beast with witchcraft of his wit, with traitorous gifts, so oh, wicked wit and gifts that have the power so to seduce one to his shameful lust, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. No, oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there from me, whose love was of that dignity that it went hand in hand, even with the vow I made to her in marriage but to decline upon a wretch whose natural gifts were poor to those of mine. 
But virtue, as it never will be moved, though lewdness courted in a shape of heaven, so lust, though to a radiant angel linked, will sell it, sate itself in a celestial bed and prey on garbage. But soft, he thinks, I sent the morning air, brief let me be. Sleeping within my orchard, my custom always of the afternoon, upon my secure hour, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed Hebanon of Isle. And in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distillment, whose effect holds such an enmity with blood of man, that swift as quicksilver it courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body. And with a sudden vigor, it doth posit in curd, like eager droppings into milk. The thin and wholesome blood, so did it mine. And a most instant tetter barked about, most lazar like, with vile and loathsome crust all my smooth body. Thus was I sleeping by a brother's hand, of life, of crown, of queen at once dispatched, cut off even in the blossoms of my sin, unhouseled, disappointed, unannealed. No reckoning made, but sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. No oh, horrible, oh horrible, most horrible. If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But howsomever thou pursues this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother ought. Leave her to heaven and to those thorns that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. Fare thee well at once. The glowworm shows the marten to be near and begins to lose his uneffectual fire. Adieu, 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 remember me. Oh, all you host of heaven. No oh, earth, what else? And shall I couple hell? No, oh, fie, hold, hold my heart. And you, my sinews, grow not instant old, but bear me stiffly up. Remember thee? Aye, thou poor ghost, whilst memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember thee? Yea, from the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, all saws of books, all forms, all pressures past that youth and observation copied there. And thy commandment, all alone, shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Yes, by heaven, O oh, most pernicious woman, O oh, villain, villain, smiling, damned villain, my tables meet it as I set it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I am sure it may be so in Denmark. So, Uncle, there you are. Here's to my word. It is adieu, adieu. Remember me. I have sworn it. Yes. Long peace. Long peace. Thank you.